Good morning, everybody. Will the uh, clerk please call the roll? Good morning. Calling the roll for the Monday, May 9th Board of Control meeting. It is 11.02. Nan Baker? Here. Dale Miller? Here. Jim Boyle, serving as an alternate for Purnell Jones? Present. Melanie Say, serving as an alternate for Mike Dever? Here. Mike Chambers, serving as an alternate for Armin Budish? Here. Lee Tucker, serving as an alternate for the fiscal officer? Here. Paul Porter? Here. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Next on our uh, list here is the review of the minutes from May 2nd. I will make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. Do we have any public comment? No public comment. Okay, let's move on to our first item, please. First item, BC 2022-278, Department of Information Technology, submitting an amendment to a contract with Mythics Incorporated for Oracle database software support and maintenance services for various departments for the period June 1st, 2016 through May 31st, 2022 to extend the time period to May 31st, 2023 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $382,226.06. Good morning, Board. Dennis Solvo, Department of IT. You've seen this uh, product, this amendment and contract previously. <clears throat> this represents a 4% increase it actually went up $14,701 from year to year. Um, this is still used, as some of you may be aware, the Oracle is still the database, is still the platform for MVP, the CAMA, uh, the MyPlace portal, and SAP. So obviously this product is going to be needed until we have full implementation of Harris and uh, MyTime. Okay, Dennis, thank you. Are there questions from the board on this item? Councilman Miller, please. Uh, Harris, I know, but my time, I didn't know of there being an implementation about that. Can you say a little bit about that? Sure, Councilman Miller. Andy Johnson, uh, Department of IT. So my time is really the, um, I guess, the common name that we're using for the WFM project. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Which I, I okay. think you're familiar with. Okay. That. I, about the full rollout. I guess I did um, hear that name used a time or two, but I didn't make the connection. Yeah, okay. yeah, and it, and it is, we, did a, we didn't do a great job of, of marketing that. Um, WFM is, is the generic info name, and my time is what we're calling it in okay. terms of the account. Fine. Okay, thank you. Are there additional questions on the item from the board? Seeing none, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2022-279, Department of Information Technology, submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in an award recommendation to Infor Public Sector Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $363,200 for staff augmentation services for go live support system integration and stabilization of workforce management and payroll for the enterprise resource planning system for the period may 1st 2022 through december 31st 2022 and recommending the award in connection with said rfp exemption good morning again andy johnson department of it so this is the contract that we had talked about back in january uh, in front of the budget uh, committee where we talked about ending the uh, INFOR program, the capitalized project program, uh, at the end of April. So that was just, what, this past Friday, I believe, that capitalized program ended. But we did know that we were going to continue to have rollouts for public works, for the sheriff's departments, and for the um, uh, Board of Election. This contract is with INFOR to support us during those rollouts. So back in January, we talked about reducing our capitalized um, uh, project by $1.4 million. And at that time, we said, hey, we were going to come back with a contract, a time and materials contract. This is that contract. Uh, it is time and materials. So it is something that we will be closely monitoring, it's something that we can end uh, favorably for the county if we uh, end up not using all of that time. Uh, I do know that there was a question why that why we extended that to December. Uh, that is well past our anticipated rollout date, but it was something that we felt like, hey, if something went wrong, we at least had this contract in place. It wasn't going to cost us any more with the, with the time and materials arrangement that we have. Thank you, Andy. Questions from the board? Yes. Councilman Miller. Do we have a final number on the capital cost? 
Uh, great question. I do not have that prepared at this time. It's going to be very much in line with what uh, we, had, we had discussed in the, I think it was the March meeting. Uh, the only variable right now is the internal labor and trying to get a finalization on that internal labor. The contracts, the uh, uh, all, basically the contract cost for the contract labor is in, and so we'll be able to present that uh, shortly. I just don't have that right at this point. Okay, so uh, uh, I would appreciate it if you would uh, prepare to present that at the next uh, update meeting that we have at committee. Sure. Yep. Okay. Thank no you. No problem. Yeah. And again, it, it should be right in line with what, what we're expecting. Just a quick question. So is this considered operating? Or yes. This, this is an operating. This so will this be an operational cost. impact the cost of the ERP. Correct. Mr. Boyle? And the uh, responses provided prior to today's meeting, it indicated, so obviously it is out of operating rather than capital, but it says that uh, last year the Department of IT ended with a surplus. Do you know what that surplus was, dollar amount? Approximately a million dollars. All right, and so is all of this, this contract is, what's the dollar amount on this? 363000 Okay. Um, and have you eaten in any of that surplus other than this contract that you're aware of? Uh, well, it's the, the, the budget's pretty, um, you know, fluid. There's a lot of ebb and flow with that, so we're watching it very closely. Um, I would say in some cases we have, but then we've seen savings to this point oh, I this get year. It. It is, so, it's, a, it's a give and take. All yeah, right, it, what I'm worried about, not worried about, what I'm, I'm just inquiring about is, A, what the, what the wiggle room you had in the budget and where you are with it now. Right. It's um, a, it's a, so if you could just do me, or have Janelle, uh, if you can just give me a, just a, a number, like here's what the current number is as we speak after this. Okay. That's All right. it. And, and it's fine. Yep, we'll do that. And, and Jim, I will say that if if we are running short, right? I mean, it's that's, a that's, it's, what, that's it's, what I'm trying to avoid. It, it's a tight it's a tight um, it's a tight window, right? That we're trying to fit into, gotcha. and we understand that. So that's something as we're getting close, as the numbers are getting closer and finalized, we'll work with our with internal team to get that uh, straight up. I, I, I see light at the end of the tunnel. It looks <laughs> good. All right, thank you. you and Andy, if you don't mind, send it to Sharon so she can distribute. Okay, to the board. Yeah. Okay, right. thank you. Yes, please. So of the 363-200, how much do you anticipate to spend? Because you're, you're taking it to the end of December, which is well past the rollout. What, and I understand that it's for what ifs, but what is a real number, do you think, of that 363? That's a, that's a great question. So the, the, uh, I think the real number is that 363. So though we did that based on a number of hours. So we have, I believe it's four or five consultants that are, that are, of being retained through this. We took a look at the hours, and we took a look at our rollout schedule to understand, okay, what do we think we need hour-wise? So we believe that the hours are accurate for what we need in that rollout. So in other words, if, if things go exactly according to plan, which they probably won't, but if they go exactly according to plan, yeah. we'll spend that as of the final rollout, which will be July with the Board of, uh, Board of Elections. Okay. So... So then this does not really include any of the unanticipated dollars that takes you to the end of December. That's correct. That is correct. Now, if we see, again, time and materials, right? So I, I like those because we have flexibility and we can manage that staff. If we see, hey, we're in, you know, let's say we're in trouble with okay. the sheriff. So sheriff isn't going according to plan. We have to extend that. We'll also take a look at the dollar figure. And so the contract would remain in place. We would come back, and, and I don't want to make it sound simple to ask for more money, but right. we would come back and let you know our status. Okay. So this 363 is really a realistic number for maybe the end of July. I think so, yeah. Okay. yeah uh, it would so. probably be better if maybe you took it to the end of July because that's what you're going to be needing it for, and then if it exceeds that, you're going to come back for more anyway. So there I is, think, yeah. my understanding, and I'm, st how long can I use the neophyte excuse? Um, <laughs> but it, there is <laughs> there is an advantage to having that contract run through the end of the year okay. um, from, a, from a management standpoint, um, but Janelle can, would be able to speak much more eloquently about that than I can. Um, so I, I followed their advice on this one, ran it through December, but we kept the hours accurate. It's also the processing time. If he had to then mm -hmm. start all over with another amendment, yeah. whereas he could just put a, a change in for dollars, it, it's it's more fluid this way. That's true. And in this case, he's got availability of staff. If one of those consultants, she gets sick or anything else. Sure. Okay. So okay. Fine. Fine. Thanks. All right. Well, good to know your timeline and understanding what you're asking for. Thank you. Sure. 
Are there any final questions from the board? Seeing none, then I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Yes. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item, please. Thank you. Next item, BC 2022-280, Department of Information Technology and Court of Common Pleas, recommending an award on a purchase order to Ornet, The Ohio State University, in the amount not to exceed $86,819.87 for upgrade support and maintenance services on VMware software subscriptions for the period February 13, 2022 through February 12, 2023. Dennis Sullivan again with Department of IT to refresh you in order to buy VMware at a greatly reduced price for the subscription service. We buy it through Ohio State's contract. Ohio State's contract is exclusive to the outfit called Ornet. So that's that process. <coughs> um, this is still used. I don't want to get into deep here and Andy can probably help me though, but it's, it's a virtualization software. It's used on 350 some servers in our community here. And that's the extent of my technology on that side. Um, you did get a timeline from Janelle. And as I look at it, and as you see, it started last year. And the forms back and forth from Ohio State and that didn't finalize till almost April. So not only with our forms, but Ohio State did an update to their legal forms. I know our legal had a run in with them, not a run in, but conversation with them. And obviously, Paul, on our purchasing side, I think we ended up with four revised quotes. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dennis. Questions from the board? Mr. Illuminating how difficult it is to deal with the government, let alone on, on both sides. Of the <laughs> government complaining about government? Yeah, yeah, really, I don't think anyone's going to listen. I don't think anyone's going to listen to that. Right? Okay, uh, any additional questions? Seeing none, I'll make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Oh, deal. Second by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next Thank item. You. Have a good day. Thank you. Next item, BC 2022-281, Department of Internal Audit, submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in an award recommendation to Walters Kluwer Financial Services Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $14,500.92. For six teammate audit management software user licenses for the period May 7, 2022 through May 6, 2023, and recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Good morning. I am Joshua Alt. I'm the manager of the Department of Internal Audit. Um, our department follows the professional standards of the Institute of Internal Auditors. Uh, those standards require that we document our workflow, everything from our annual risk assessment to creation of the annual audit plan, performing conducting audits, and then finally reporting in um, remediation of identified issues. So this audit software we've been using since 2013 to make that documentation of our entire workflow much, much easier. Um, so we're requesting the, the RFP exemption to continue the use of teammate for another year as it's the most cost and resource effective. Okay, Josh, thank you. Are there questions from the board? Seeing no questions, I will make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2022-282, Department of Sustainability, submitting an amendment to a contract with Bongiorno Consulting LLC for consulting services for network infrastructure planning in connection with the expansion of the Cleveland Cuyahoga Bike Share Program for the period March 1st, 2021 through February 28th, 2022 to extend the time period to February 28th, 2023 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $30,000. Thanks, Mike Foley, uh, Department of Sustainability. So this is a contract extension for Bongiorno, as Sharon said. Um, it, just a little bit of history on this. That, um, we received $284,000 in, fund, uh, in funds from NOACA to spend on the expansion of the old bike share system. Remember the UH bikes that were, that were out in kind of front of the, the building and a lot of other places. Um, after we received that money, the kind of bike share world kind of changed dramatically. So those types of bikes aren't even made anymore, uh, and scooters and scooter companies kind of took over the kind of the, the environment around um, bike share. So scooters and e-bikes are, are kind of the thing now. So NOACA allowed us to uh, kind of repurpose those dollars in order to use them for kind of infrastructure for 
places to park these, these devices. Uh, and um, that's why we hired Bongiorno to help us kind of think through where we should put devices throughout the community, but also what types of kind of uh, parking infrastructure should exist at the 300 locations that we're, we're looking at right now. Um, so the, uh, secondly, in the meantime, the, um, the, there's a change in the federal guidelines and, and resultantly in the, in the state guidelines. So there was kind of a hold on the project until those uh, guidelines were updated. Um, and uh, Bongiorno, and so basically we want to rehire Bongiorno for the next year just to kind of make sure that we're off to speed on where these things can be located, how far away from the streets they are, um, if they intersect with uh, RTA sign, you know, devices or uh, stop, stop, stopping places, things like that. So that's, that's what this contract's for. Uh, City of Cleveland is kicking in 15000 for this. Uh, and then we also, we license all the scooter companies, so we expect to have another $20,000 in the summer to, to help uh, pay, for the, um, pay for the work. Thank you, Mr. Foley. Are there questions from the board on this item? Mr. Boyle, please. Um, first, nice job. I mean, I, I think this is an important project and, and also something that is beneficial long term. I give you guys a lot of credit for, for moving forward. My, my question is, so I'm looking at the cities that you're use that are here. I mean, what was how did they get in? What were the because as I look at it, and as a proud former resident of the uh, East Side Heights area, I'm happy that a lot of my communities are in there. But Lakewood seems to be the only West Side. What 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 was the criteria, and how did that happen? Um, so a lot, of, you know, initially the scooter companies just wanted to be in kind of the denser city of Cleveland. To right. be honest with you, we worked for the county and said, hey, if you guys want to get licensed, we need you to to be um, at least contingent or you know con contiguous to some of the uh, the Cleveland communities where there are scooters at, um, they said okay, we agree to that. And so we, we're looking at places where there's already density around Cleveland neighborhoods. So kind of some of those East Side communities and then uh, the far west side of uh, Cleveland and Lakewood. We've asked kind of some of the the southern you know kind of suburbs around uh, Cleveland, and there hasn't been a lot of uptake or interest so far. So, okay. but it could expand. All right. Please. Yeah. Hey, Mike. Um, I did had that. I had a question on the the cost. Is the first forty thousand on? Was that at a zero? Were we just starting the program at that point, or was that a continuation of another program? The three hundred locations that we initially did. So, so that was that was the first contract with Bongiorno. I mean, this is all kind of figuring this all out, right? Where are we going to put rebalancing stations? Cleveland had a bunch of ideas, you know, uh, and then the suburban communities, we've met with all the planners and, you know, they've met with their communities. So it was kind of putting those all together. And then, and then the problem is you have to get ODOT approval for each one of these sites. And, yeah. and you have to look at for like historical uh, and environmental, um, you know, concerns, things like that. Yeah. So uh, are, the, are the 300 locations the same locations that are per currently used, or are you changing locations? There will be some changes and some movements, and, and some of the locations that are currently there may be able to be, be moved up or moved closer, especially Lakewood's got a lot of problems because they're such a, a dense community, so this will really help Lakewood out, or, uh, yeah. to be honest with you. So, so there will be some um, modifications of the, the current spots, but, okay. but for the most part, they'll be roughly the same. Okay. It just seemed like the original contract was 40000 and this one is thirty. And we're just modifying. We're not going like we did the first contract, where it was brand new and all that collaboration and all that work to get it off the ground. Where this is not that. This is a modification. This, it just it, you know, that's that's. I, seems like a lot for a modification. It is, but there is a lot of back and forth with ODOT, and, and this is a little bit more work than we anticipated, I think. But but the other thing is, Bongiorno is really good at this, and, and as we, you know, so the the original contract got us up and through kind of doing the RFP, and I, I would like them to be on board to help us as we hire someone and, and we're deploying, that they're available to help us kind of think, you know, answer questions or push or nudge or, you know, kind of do some project management after the uh, the award is made. Okay. Do you, if I may, do you anticipate that there would be another investment after this that I hear you say? No, I think this is it. This is it. Okay. Thank you. And sure. it is a good project. Good to see that you're moving forward on it. Good. Yeah, I, see, I see like on all our road projects moving forward, they, they, they try to incorporate like bike lanes yeah. and all the other stuff. I mean, this is, this is what's happening. I think this is what I think our urban residents want. 
you know, may I ask, yeah. is there a mixture? Is, is there bikes still offered? Or is it? Yeah, so e bikes are become, I don't know if you've seen around town, so I think I forget who has e bikes now, but you've got the scooters and e bikes, and e bikes are pretty cool, so they're pretty no, quick. No longer so. can you rent a bike if you wanted to. Not the old bikes anymore. Those mm -hmm. things are, uh, there's no pedal bikes anymore. <laughs> so no, no one wants to Everything is electrified, or, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I can't do with the exercise. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's not for me. <clears throat> okay, no comment. Um, Seeing no further questions, uh, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2022-283, Department of Sustainability, submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in an award recommendation to CDP North America Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $65,000 to explore the feasibility for the creation and use of a climate risk to business tool for the period May 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, and recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Mike Foley, Department of Sustainability. So uh, this is the third subcontract out of a grant we got from the Cleveland Foundation to work on this climate disclosure project, or climate um, risk to business uh, project. Um, and, and the idea is, is that there are because of climate change, there's going to be greater risks uh, to different geographies in, in the country and in the world. Um, Cleveland State and the Cleveland Water Alliance have kind of put together this metrics of different things to measure, um, you know, insurance pro issues that will affect businesses, especially um, based on, you know, no water or, or wildfire issues or um, the southeast, you know, uh, salt water getting into water systems, kind of things like that. Uh, heart uh, storm issues. So CDP is a, a national, international group that we report our data to for our climate disclosure work, our greenhouse gas analysis. Uh, and they're interested in this because they want to see more investment put into, um, you know, kind of, um, uh, they want to describe accurately kind of the risk of climate to businesses, but also use that as a way to push for more investment uh, for climate uh, resiliency work. Um, and so this uh, this contract would be to, for them to work with. They've got uh, you know thousands of businesses throughout the world who they work with and, and local governments, and, and they'll be taking the tool that CSU and, and uh, the Water Alliance are putting together, and then vetting that out with kind of all the um, you know subgroups of, of the uh, businesses and, and local governments they work with. So to kind of make this tool more attractive or more user friendly uh, uh, instrument. Thank you, Mr. Foley. Are there questions on this item? Please. Uh, <clears throat> do we expect that by the end of the year that this tool will be fully designed and ready to go? I th I'm hoping so, Councilman. Um, it's, the, the data is interesting to get. So there's, you know, CSU and, and the water lines are, you know, they're scouring. We're working with insurance companies and working with, um, you know, credit reporting agencies and federal agencies. And so we've got a good kind of idea of where all that data is going to be coming from and vetting it out, thinking through, you know, what, you know, do you give uh, drought awareness or drought issues a, a 10 on a scale versus a 7 or things that, you know, I think that CDP is going to help us think through. I'm hoping that we'll have it by the end of the, of the year. Okay. So then uh, w when we have it ready to go. Then uh, what's going to be done with it, and, and who's going to do it, and who's going to run the show? Cleveland, uh, the idea is for Cleveland State to house this and to be the kind of um, expert in this, to be honest with you. They've got some pretty smart people over at the Energy Policy Center. And so they are, they've got some money in their budget just to uh, um, put, you know, they've, they've got money for a server and, and to start designing how to, how to use this, um, you know, um, out in the world, make it public, I guess. Uh, and then CDP will help with uh, the phase of, of pushing it out to, to businesses. The idea also, by the way, is that we think that, that we think insurance companies will be interested in this and, and that there will be private investment after this, the tool is created. So will businesses that use this product have to pay a subscription fee or will they get it free of charge? The idea is to, that it would be free of charge, that it would be a publicly facing document that everyone can see that it's not, uh, you know, behind a paywall. Uh-huh. Okay. Please. So you do not anticipate that the county will have to support this in, in any way through funding? Correct. 
Thank you. Sure. Are there any final questions on the item? See it. This right. is right for now. Yeah. Okay. Seeing no further questions, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2022-284, Fiscal Department, submitting an amendment to a contract with Stiefel, Nicholas & Company, Incorporated, for financial advisory services for the period August 1st, 2017 through July 31st, 2022, to extend the time period to July 31st, 2025, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $495,000. Good morning, Michael Sapola, Fiscal Office. Uh, this is a three-year amendment to the current fiscal advisory service group, um, basically just to continue on with what they're currently working on and give us the opportunity to use them going forward. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Are there questions from the board on this item? My question is that the, uh, the annual amount seems to be almost twice what we've been previously paying, and I'm wondering if that's correct, and if so, why that is. I can take a stab at that, Mike. I know that back when we first had the contract, it was 200000 for one year, and then subsequently there was a discussion about the jail going on, and um, all of that, that was supposed to be a separate contract with, uh, with Stiefel. As you know, the jail, uh, he's been tracking hours, and if the jail moves forward, then per the agreement, he'll be able to get reimbursed for that. But if the jail never moves forward, you know, he's basically eaten all that time. So we negotiated going back, you know, since the base year was 200,000, and then with COVID and everything going on, we thought we'd slow down. And in fact, we actually sped up. So once again, Stiefel, um, we did some refundings and everything else throughout that time with the Indians. Um, they actually, you know, uh, ate, ate the cost of that. So now uh, moving forward, we negotiated going to 165, which is still, you know, 35,000 dollars cheaper than pre-COVID, and we went with three years, uh, knowing that we can cancel with, you know, uh, I think it's 30 days notice, just to lock in stability. There's a lot going on. There's a lot, you know, the as you know, we have uh, sales tax issues. We have a lot of discussion going forward, and Stiefel has been with the county for quite some time, and that historic date is there. So, so. Do we pay a set amount for for all the work that's required for the year, or, or or does the amount we pay depend on how many hours are used? It's a set amount per year, and like I said, uh, the only thing carved out of this is the is the jail. There's a separate agreement on that. Um, you know, I know the support has 500 hours, but I know um, in speaking with Bob and even myself, he's putting probably at least a thousand hours outside of the jail time uh, with the county. Uh, and I know council has direct asset, ac access to, you know, the executive does as well as uh, myself and Walter. Um, so. So it's, uh, it's good to know that I can ask them to come before finance yeah. and budget any time I want without costing us more money. Absolutely. And, and yeah. he reminds me of that, don't, you know. <laughs> the lawyers won't do that. I, I, I have... Uh, I have not abused that privilege. It's it's been once in yeah. a while, but not uh, not excessive. Yeah, I do make fun of him because I always call him saying, you know, keep it short. You're costing me money, but he's on a fixed fee, and it's mm -hmm. it's not. So. Yeah. Okay. Are there additional questions? How how did we get stifled to begin with? I'll be honest with you. The bay, way back when Tim Oftermat was there, um, it's once again it's the complexity of the county, I believe. Uh, and, and Bob uh, was the you know protege under Tim, and uh, just continued on. The good news is, if the new executive chooses differently, we can you know exit out. And what my my concern is more towards I think Paul Porter's realm, which is that no, don't worry, I'm not going to call on you. Um, you know, when we continue with a particular entity as our mm -hmm. vendor, it mm -hmm. to a certain extent blocks any other vendors from entering the realm and. Mike, your comments are, of course, correct. I mean, yeah. they've been with the county for a long time, and they know the county, but that's the genesis of the old boy network that precludes other vendors from entering into the realm. Uh, Stifle's work is great. I mean, I've, I've known him for yeah. years. I've known Tim Offter, Matt, for years. I, I have no qualms about that, but it does, moving forward, and I know the jail is a big 
part of what we're, we've discussed here for the last years financially, et cetera. But um, on a core level, the continuation of this without a, 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 an open process fosters the continuation of the same vendors. And that's something that I think we all need to be cognizant of. I don't, was it an RFP? I don't remember, or RFQ probably. So I know you didn't call on me yet, Jim, but this one, the one that we entered into was an RFP exemption in 2017. Right. There may have been a competitive process. You know, I assume there that. was, but I don't, I don't know. Because let me yeah. be clear, they were with us before 2017. Right. Sure. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, and this is one that we flagged when we were preparing the agenda as something that should be bid out, you know, when this period ends. Ain't going to like it. Like so I it. think, you know, if we can just get it bid out, maybe they'll be the best one, maybe not. And, we'll and, and I agree with you, it should be. Um, it's unfortunately we're knee deep in so many projects and to really sever ties at this point on the expertise, I think once we get through this big uh, elephant in the room, I think we'll move forward. I think it'd be a great opportunity then to, to bid it out. Right. I, and that, that, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we had that conversation. Thanks, Jim. No, definitely. I'm there for you, Paul. <laughs> Are there any additional questions? Seeing no additional questions, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? I will second. Seconded by Mr. Boyle. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item, please. Next item, BC 2022-285, Law Library, submitting an amendment to a contract with Thompson Reuters doing business as West Publishing Corporation for electronic legal research and reference database services for library pa patrons for the period June 1st, 2019 through May 31st, 2022 to extend the time period to May 31st, 2023 to modify the scope of services by reducing the number of licenses effective June 1st, 2022 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $78,204. Good morning. My name is Kathy Dugan. I'm the director of the County Law Library. And um, the reason we're doing only one year instead of three, which I would have preferred, is that new features are probably coming within the next year, and the vendor has flagged that for me. And so we decided to amend it. And what we did is I reduced the licenses we have for patrons in-house by one or seats, whatever you call them, to save myself a little wiggle room to get some of those new features when they come around next year, hopefully. Um, and so that's why we're here with only a single year amendment. Okay, thank you. Questions from the board? Councilman Miller? Just a comment that this is a really rare item because the number of licenses always goes up. Mm -hmm. this, Sorry, I don't understand. We, we always get requests Oh. To add more licenses. <laughs> yes. This is really unusual that the, that the number of licenses went down. Well, COVID affected the amount of people who are physically coming to the library to conduct their legal research. And so what we're working toward is a possibility of remote access. Mm -hmm. um, and so that would mean more licenses. More licenses. <laughs> <laughs> so you may see me again next sure. year. Okay. Yes. Okay. But for now, we'll be happy. There you go. <laughs> Mr. Boyle? Not a question, but it's my annual uh, comment. The, the, the law, if any of you have not been to the law library, please go. It is an absolutely beautiful structure. It is, it is, um, it truly is remarkable. On the fourth floor of the, uh, of the old county courthouse, it is worth walking through there and, and, and just looking at it. It's beautiful. And I can provide tours <laughs> of the courthouse and the law library. So. Yeah. No, I mentioned that in my call on Wednesday, so very good. Okay, uh, seeing no further questions, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Boyle. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2022-286, Law Library, submitting an RFP exemption, which will result in an award recommendation to Thompson Reuters, doing business as West Publishing Corporation, in the amount not to exceed $44,439 for electronic legal research and reference database services for library staff for the period June 1st, 2022 through May 31st, 2025, and recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Uh, this is a three-year contract, brand new, um, with Westlaw, and we would be adding some tax content. We did lose our ability to acquire tax content through the Bureau of National Affairs, when they migrated their print to online and made it two and a half times more expensive. So this is a way to get back some tax content. 
um, in the specialty databases that are not licensed for the patrons to use. But I can use it on their behalf, um, as can my staff. Um, so it's going to be very helpful. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, questions from the board on this item? Seeing no questions, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Melanie Say. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Thank ne you. Thank you. Next item. Next item, BC 2022-287, Sheriff's Department, recommending an award on requisition 9202 and enter into a contract with Schwartz Uniform Corporation in the amount not to exceed $127,500 for the purchase of 80 uniforms for new employees in the Law Enforcement Division for the period June 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2024. Good morning. This is Philip Lilly from the Sheriff's Department. We are requesting approval of a contract with Schwartz Uniform to provide uniforms to deputy new hires. Uh, per the deputy's collective bargaining agreement, the county is to provide all new hires with their uniform, their first uniform. And this contract will allow us to actually streamline the purchasing process for the uniforms when they board on new hires. Thank you, Philip. Questions from the board on this item? Yes. Councilman Miller. It seems like a lot of money for uniforms. Um, uh, I, I've, I've never spent more than a quarter of this much money for a, for a suit of clothes. Uh, no, uh, how, how come they're so expensive? That's understandable. Um, what it is is there's actually two sets of uniforms. When Dippany Niners come in, they actually have a winter set and a summer set for the uniforms. So we actually get two sets, and it's all BSSA approved, which means they have to have standard um, leggings, you know, they have to have the, the stripes in them. So everything's set to a standard. And the reason they are that expensive is, yeah, unfortunately, we, we get two sets, plus they get the coat and everything else with it. So that's the reason they cost so much. And on this one, um, what the vendor did, too, was they actually built in a, an inflation index on it. Um, so this year, it's $1,500 per uniform, which is what we're basically paying right now. Next year, they, it's going up 6% to $1,600, and then the year after, another 6% to $1,700. So they built that in due to inflation, which is running rampant right now at the time. So, And uh, how come we only got one bid on this? If maybe if, if we would have gotten some competition, we might have done better. And I understand, and it was a formal um, request that was sent out by the Department of Purchasing, and we did send out a plan holders list of everybody that's normally provided the uniforms before, and unfortunately on this one, it was just one bidder that submitted. So. Okay. okay. Councilwoman, please. So when we say there's 80 um, new uniforms, we're talking about not just the uniform, we're talking about, you said coats, and one is summer, one is winter. Correct. So actually, if, if you're talking two different seasons, that's actually 160 uniforms? Well, we're basing on, um, because each deputy, we're only looking to hire 80. Um, I, well, we love to hire 80. It's just right now, the environment, yeah. um, we're, we're kind of short on deputies. But the goal is to hire in 80 new hires over the next two and a half years. But we're... we're we kind of estimated what we think we're going to hire this year, next year, and the year after, okay. based on what's coming in. So, but yes, they would each get two sets. They would get a, a winter set and a summer set with their uniforms. And do you, if I may, do you hire them and then order it because you have sizes and things to consider? Correct. Um, right now, we're doing that on an ad hoc basis. Um, what they do is they'll we'll hire somebody. They'll come in. They go down, get measured at right. the shop. They send us the quote. Then we have to go through the procurement process and then send it over to them to actually order the uniform so it costs time. Okay. Um, with this contract, they'll actually be able to go and get fitted and then we can just go ahead and tell them to order the uniform right away so then they get it quicker. So it's not 80 uniforms that are coming and you're storing them. Correct. You're um, doing it one by everybody's one. Everybody's actually fitted and we're hoping to bring in more groups, a larger group, so it's easier to sure. run them through and get them measured and then get the uniforms on order. Okay, good to know. Now, shoes, anything else that's included in the uniform? No shoes. It'd no just shoes. Be belts, holsters, belts. shirts, pants. Mm -hmm. um, they get the polos, the coats. It's all included in that? Correct. Okay, well, that makes more sense than for the price of the uniform. Yeah. Thank you. 
Councilman Miller, if I could follow up on the question that you inquired about, you know, why didn't we get more bids? Uh, Sharon included at the bottom of page 33 in the backup materials on the agenda. We're going to start trying to include the results of the no bid sheets that we send out. In this case, we only got one of those no bid sheets returned to the Department of Purchasing. And it was just from a vendor who indicated that while they do clothing, they don't do this specific type of service. So basically an inability to provide all the stuff that the Sheriff's Department was looking for. So uh, not a lot of other specificity aside from that. And that's one vendor out of many. We don't get a lot of responses usually if somebody's not interested in bidding more often than not, they're not interested in, you know, returning paperwork related to that, too. <laughs> but we'll provide that when we can. Yeah, that's uh, to be expected. Okay. Seeing no further questions, comments, I will make a motion. Oh, how long have we been with Schwartz? I think we've been with them for a while, haven't we? Um, we recently switched back to them. We were using another vendor, and okay. so it was kind of just sending them wherever to get the uniforms. Thanks. Sure. I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Boyle. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Thank Next you. item. Next item, BC 2022-288, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Children and Family Services, submitting an amendment to an agreement with the University of South Florida Board of Trustees for creation, implementation, and maintenance of the Just-in-Time Foster Parent Caregiver Web-Based Training Program. For the period March 23rd, 2020 through December 31st, 2021, to extend the time period to December 31st, 2022, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $30,000. Good morning. Marcos Cortez with Health and Human Services on behalf of Children and Family Services. Again, this is a contract amendment with the University of South Florida to implement the Just in Time Foster Parent Caregiver Web Based Training Program. This training program provides information and web-based training videos that facilitates foster parent and caregiver learning strategies to improve parenting skills. Some of these topics include trauma-informed parenting, mentoring of birth parents by foster parents, strategies to support successful reuni reunification, and many more topics. Uh, the University of South Florida has the expertise and the infrastructure to do this work. They are doing it here. They are doing it in other states. Uh, and they have been with us for uh, quite some time. Thank you, Marcos. Questions from the board? Seeing no questions, I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Thank you. Moving on to exemptions, please. Next item, BC 2022-289, Department of Development, requesting to amend board approval number BC 2022-171, dated March 21st, 2022, which approved an RFP exemption, resulting in a grant award to the Fund for Our Economic Future in the total amount not to exceed $9 million to service fiscal agent for workers, workforce funders group for various workforce development activities. For the period May 1st, 2022 through April 30th, 2025, by changing the grantee's name to Fund for Our Economic Future of Northeast Ohio, by changing the time period to commencing upon contract signature of all parties for a period of three years, and by changing the funding source to General Fund American Rescue Plan Act Revenue Replacement Provision of Government Services. Good morning, Christopher Ferroni from the Department of Development. This item is being brought forth to kind of clarify, clean up some items that were identified in the original approval that came through from our processing through procurement and getting the item through the procurement process that that these items were, were brought to our attention as needing to be addressed as uh, as we move forward to the next phase of getting the item to council and approval. Okay, thank you. Questions from the board? Councilman Miller? No? no. Please. Yeah. Uh, just in clarifying, so this these dollars we're already approved. You're just coming back to make sure that it's transferred correctly. Is that what this is? No. It, it's clarifying the, the the language for for the funding aspect of where you're talking about because those other items that we came through as to whether they're listed as general fund or related to ARPA or, and, and and those those conversations that we've had through the board previously. So on that item, and it's identifying clarity as to where the where the funding's coming from as it moves forward to uh, 
to leave council for consideration. So it hasn't gone to council yet. Correct. It will be going. This is just the exemption. Yes. I understand. And then they'll come before you or your committees. And Got it. Got it. Thank I you. I think you may see it Appreciate tomorrow, right? You know how we changed. I know one of them, we changed the nomenclature on the American mm -hmm. Rescue Plan. That's one of the items. So just to make sure, I'm assuming for consistency. Sure. Any additional questions on this item? Seeing none, then I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item. Next item, BC 2022-290, Sheriff's Department, requesting to amend board approval number BC 2021-734, dated December 13th, 2021, which approved an alternative procurement process resulting in award recommendations to various providers for emergency offsite medical services for inmates for the period January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, to add partners in Nephrology Care Limited, effective May 9th, 2022, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $5,000. Good morning. This is Philip Woolley from the Sheriff's Department. This request is to add the vendor um, and additional funds to the already approved alternative procurement process for additional uh, jail medical services from this provider. Okay, thank you, Philip. Questions from the board on this item? How much are you adding? 5000 That's it? Okay. Okay, seeing no further questions. Oh yeah, please. Just curious, why would the amount be so low? I mean, you're adding another vendor. What can you, what is this vendor that you're adding equal to $5,000? Um, well, that's basically what we're estimating that we're gonna use for this year with the vendor. Um, because um, as the jail, we don't have any control of where Metro Health sends the inmates out. And for this, it'd be probably dialysis care. Okay. So. And you, and you believe that 5,000 is enough to provide those services for this vendor? Yes, we believe so. Okay. Okay. It's what? I'm afraid to ask because it'll show up. <laughs> Mr. We'll Boyle, did you want to add? No. no. Okay. I'll talk to you. Seeing no further you. questions, then I will make a motion to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Lee Tucker. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Next item. <laughs> Next item, BC 2022-291, Sheriff's Department, requesting to amend board approval number BC 2022-108, dated February 22nd, 2022, which approved an alternative procurement process resulting in award recommendations to various providers for various equipment repairs in the jail facilities for the period February 22nd, 2022 through December 31st, 2022 to add SoundCom effective May 9th, 2022 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $30,000. Good morning, this is Philip Lilly again from the Sheriff's Department. Uh, this request is similar to the last one where we're requesting to add a vendor and additional funds for uh, jail facility services to the already approved alternative procurement process. Okay, Philip, thank you again. Questions from the board on this item? What does SoundCom do? Um, that's a great question. Unfortunately, the person that does um, the jail is not here, but I can get back. Yeah, just shoot me an email. I do have a, I, I know in the Justice Center, there's the old council chamber room that I think they have meetings and they do uh, okay. stuff in there. So I'm assuming SoundCom is. And I know they've stepped up their virtual visits too. I don't know where that. I, I'm I don't just think curious. That's part of it. I, I, yeah. yeah. All right. Certainly, I'll get back that's, to you on that one. If you don't mind, send it to Sharon. Sharon will forward it. All right. Thank you. Uh, any additional questions on this item? Seeing none, then I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Miller. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The item is approved. Thank you. Moving on to today's consent agenda items. We're on consent items BC 2022-292 through 294. It's kind of a small uh, agenda today. So let me know if you have any questions on it. Whoa. Please, Councilman Miller. 
My question is, why isn't there the usual long list of various little purchases? I talked to Paul about that right now. Go ahead, Paul. Thanks, Councilman Miller. We're working through the queue right now. We don't have anything that's been outstanding for a long time. So I told Mike, I think it's just, you know, cyclical. It's not like there's a backlog that we're working through. Um, so I know there's already items that are going to be on the list for next week. I think it was just a slow week for whatever reason. Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I asked him that before the meeting as well. And okay. Yep. Glad to hear. So. Okay, seeing no further questions, I will make a motion to approve today's consent agenda items as listed. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The item is approved. Moving on to other business. There is no other business. Is there any public comment? And there's no public comment. I will make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Ms. Melanie Say. All in favor to adjourn say 